Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video from the news playlist. In this video, we will work on the room database. So we will build our database and just to be able to save the articles into a local database. Okay, so to do that, we'll go to the data layer and we're going to create a new package here called this local. And by the way, all the dependencies for room database are already added. So no worries about that. Okay, so the first step to implement room database is to create our table. So our table is inside the domain layer, which is the article table. So let's go to the domain layer model here. Let's go to the article and let's actually annotate this with entity. So that's how we create a table with room. Now we can pass extra information for your table, like the table name and primary keys, foreign keys, but we don't have all of that. So we're just going to keep it simple and annotate this with entity. Now we can go to our local package and we can actually implement the DAO. So the DAO stands for the data access object, which is the class or the interface in our case that's responsible to access our database and manipulate the data like inserting a new record, update records, uh, delete, and all of these operations. So the CRUD operations that uh, the, the DAO is re responsible for that. Let's create the new DAO. And with room database, this is very simple. You just annotate this with DAO and room now will generate the implementation of this interface. Now let's actually create an insert function and that would be a suspend function called upsert because here we will make this function acts in two ways. Uh, so it will actually update and insert and I'll show you that how we can do it. Let's pass the article we want to insert. And now we can just annotate this with insert. And here on conflict, on conflict strategy, we can say replace. So if we are trying to insert the same article, we basically update the already existed article. Now let's make this interface and let's create a function to just delete, suspend function, delete, we pass the article that we want to delete and we need a function to retrieve the articles. So function get articles and in here we can return flow. So this would be a list of article and we can annotate this with a query. Now let's write our query. We're going to just select all from article. Let's just edit this, select all from article. And that's it for our DAO. Okay, now let me go to the entity. And as you can see here, we have an object. And you know, in databases, we only can save primitive data types like strings, integers, and all these primitive data types. But here we have an object. So we want a way to convert that object into primi primitive data types. We can do that with uh, type converter in uh, in room so let's create inside the local package here let's create news type converter and that type converter will actually convert this object into primitive data type so let's add uh, the provided type converter annotation so that's how we create that basically and then we want to have two functions the first function will convert from the source object to the string uh, primitive data type we annotate this with type converter function source to string and we pass our source here as a source object we return it as a string so in here we're just gonna create a string we are going to add the id comma name source id comma source name and then we create another function also type converter and we call we call this string to source we get the source here and we return it as a source object so as you can see here we merge these data with a comma and we can split this data by the comma and we return the source object we can do that with the split function in Kotlin. So we can say return source.split. Uh, the delimiter here would be the comma. And we call let on that. So in here we get 
the source array. So this will just split uh, the string into an array by this comma array. And here the first index of this array would be the ID. So we can just create the source object and we can say source array. That would be the ID and the index one would be the name. And that's it. That's it for our type converter. Now we can finally build our database. We can create that class. So let's create use database and let's extend from room database. And in here, we need to add the database annotation. Here we can just configure our database. We need to pass the entities and we need to pass that into an array. We only have one entity, which is the article entity. And a class and we need to pass the version here and we'll pass one don't pass zero because that will give you an error and we also want to tell room about our type converters so let's add the type converters annotation and we pass our new type converter class okay now we want to make this abstract because room will implement this for us and we also want to add the DAO into this class like that, news DAO. And again, Rome will just implement these abstract classes for us. Now we have not built this database yet and we will do that inside the app module. So let's go to our DI package and let's create a new provides function here. Let's call singleton and we wanna provide then use database. In here, we want the application that will be used uh, in room database and we want to turn news database. So to build this database with room, we can say return room dot database builder. We need to pass the context, which is the application, in our case, the class of uh, the database. So news database. And we also want to pass the name of this database so i'll just pass news db we can actually extract that into the constant file that's what i'm gonna do so let's go to the constant file news database name and I'm copy this get back here paste it in here and now we also want to add our type converter in here so we can say add type converter we need to add news type converter pass an object from this class then we call fall back to destruction migration so this function will basically use for migration if you update something in your database so room will basically just migrate that database for you now we can call build on that and your database is ready to use but we want to provide the DAO object now so we want to create another function singleton and we can say provide news DAO let's call it provide and in here we want to get an instance from our database this one since we created that in here so room will inject it in this function for us uh, i mean uh, dagger health now we need to return news DAO and we can return news database dot news DAO that's it for the database uh, to make sure it works we can go to the main activity and in here we can actually just launch a lifecycle scope and we need to inject the DAO in here so let's call inject letting it var DAO which is a news DAO and in here we can say DAO dot upsert and we just want to fake an article we can go to the details screen because we have an object in there in the preview function we can copy this here i can copy that and we can pass it in here now let's launch the app and check if we are going to get an error or not okay so let's see what is that an entity must have oh we actually forgot to pass the primary key for our article. Uh, that's a silly mistake. 
let's go back to the article and we'll let, let's make the URL here as a primary key. And now let's launch the app again. Uh, actually, we want to launch it. We want to launch the app, not the preview. So let's click here. And we have not got any crash. Now to make sure that we already saved an article, we can click on app inspection here and wait a little bit. We can go to the database in, uh, inspector. And as you can see, this is our database. Let's click on the article table. And yeah, so as you can see, we actually saved that article. This is the content. This is the source. And yeah, so we saved that article successfully. We know that our room database implementation is correct. Let's go back to the main activity to delete that. So let's delete this and let's also delete this. Okay, so that was all for this video. In the next video, we will work on the bookmark screen and we are close enough to finish this project. So I will catch you in the next video.